Hi, my name is Camille Razan. I'm a second year biomed student and welcome to my presentation on investigating HIV-1 viral evolution in the gut. So first of all, what is HIV? HIV stands for human immunodeficiency virus, which is the virus that causes HIV AIDS. In 2022, 39 million people had HIV AIDS and 40 million people have died from the disease. HIV infects the body's immune cells, and when these cells become depleted due to HIV infection, this leaves an individual vulnerable to a variety of opportunistic diseases that a healthy immune system would effectively combat. We'll be employing two parts of the HIV genome that account for two HIV proteins in order to study how HIV transmits and evolves. The regions of interest in my project are the RT region, shown here, which is important for the HIV life cycle, and the NEF region, shown over here, which is important for the progression of the disease. Since previous research has found all the proteins HIV encodes for, shouldn't it be easy to develop a cure? The problem with HIV is that it develops drug resistance very rapidly to every treatment we've developed so far, and that's because HIV has a very high mutation rate, so it quickly evolves a variant that is resistant to that given treatment. Even today, we can find multiple drug treatments to prevent breakthrough infections, but this still can't cure HIV. This is because there's viral reservoirs in the body that are ineffectively targeted by drugs and act as sanctuary sites for HIV. An important example of this is the gut-associated lymphoid tissue. This is a hurdle for creating a cure because drugs have not removed virus hiding these reservoirs, and that's why I'm going to focus on the gut in the project. In order to develop a treatment that can effectively cure HIV, we need to learn more about the way the virus transmits in the body. Our two research objectives are to develop an algorithm that can infer how HIV evolves and transmits. To the right over here are two examples of transmission networks that have been developed by an algorithm from data in a lab. A second objective is to determine if any particular organs in the gut are of particular importance for the evolution or hiding out of HIV. In order to create the data set necessary to reach the research objective, we need to amplify certain regions of the HIV genome in patient samples in order to have enough DNA to be detected by sequencing. We have access to biopsy samples from the colon, duodenum, esophagus, and stomach from eight patients, and samples from multiple visits, which allow us to study the evolution of HIV over time before and after treatment. We're using a lab technique called polymerase chain reaction to amplify only the desired sequence of the HIV genome. In this project, that's the RT and NEF region. PCR works by using each DNA strand as a template for the next round, which effectively multiplies the DNA exponentially. And this amplification is necessary to ensure we have enough DNA to actually be picked up by sequencing later in the project. We use a technique called electrophoresis after we do the polymerase chain reaction to, that separates the DNA fragments by size, which verifies that we've actually amplified the correct DNA fragment. And then after electrophoresis, that's when we send these samples away for next generation sequencing. This project is novel from previous projects because this next generation sequencing can detect variants present as low as 1% within viral population, whereas the previously used Sanger sequencing could only detect 15 to 20%. And that's important because a patient can have hundreds of variants of HIV at any one time. Here's some examples for the amplification of six samples, some results I've got. We expected amplified fragments that were approximately 700 base pairs in length. Um, you can see here my bands are just below the 750 line on the ladder over here. And this indicates that I was successful. However, one of the six samples here has no clear band. This is an example of a negative result that indicates that amplification for the sample is not successful. For my project, of the total 76 patient samples that were available, 25 were amplified for the RT region and 16 for the NEC region. And this included a mix of samples from all eight patients. Our samples have not yet been sent for sequencing as we're still working on amplifying samples that I was unsuccessful with. Um, but we need to do this in order to develop a more complete data set. Here's an example of the transmission network that illustrates what we expect to be able to create once the samples are sequenced. Using variations of sequences, the computer can infer a likely path by which HIV evolved, evolved in an individual. One limitation of this data set is that it is not complete because the synchronous sequencing can only detect more common variants. In some cases, the algorithm makes a mistake. It can infer that a variant detected during visit four originated from a variant detected during visit five, even though we know that's not possible. This data set can only be used to infer viral transmission. It's not accurate enough to predict. This data set, the data set I'm hoping to help develop um, will be used to develop a more accurate algorithm that can be hopefully predictive how HIV spreads and therefore will have important applications for the development of a cure to HIV. As I've alluded to in the previous slide, the samples I've amplified still need to be sequenced, so that's important future direction for the project. We're also hoping to re-optimize PCR conditions for some of the samples I was not able to amplify to get a more complete data set. If we want to make accurate predictions about viral evolution within one patient, ideally we should have amplified as many samples as possible over several visits for that patient. Finally, we need to conduct the computational modeling to develop the transmission network similar to the one presented in the previous slide. This will give us a clear picture of HIV evolution and hopefully have important applications for understanding how the gut works as a reservoir for HIV. I want to say thank you for those in my presentation and express a special thanks to Anna, Reina, Leila, and Simone for all your guidance and support over this past semester. And here are the references for my presentation.